All right, welcome back everybody. Anybody that's new here, thanks for joining me today. Uh, if you are new, consider subscribing if you like ice fishing content. Uh, this one's gonna be a little bit different than what I normally film. I'm currently kind of like waiting for first ice. It should be here very soon. Um, but until then, I was just thinking about it the other day and I kind of wanted to go over like the top three biggest walleye I got because I got a couple of really big monsters last year. Um, and then I've already gotten one bigger one. I'm staring at it right now. But if you guys are interested in that kind of video, um, I'm going to talk about them. I'm going to list probably the techniques that I was using, uh, which are going to be very odd for some of you. And then to uh, basically show you guys where you can get your own giant walleye. Okay, so first things first, uh, if you guys are not new, or even if you are new, and you guys are interested in picking up some new DWS Outdoors merch, um, I got I came out with a whole new line this year, just for us fishermen that like to walk on the hard water. Hopefully you can read that. Uh, I'll have that linked in the description below. Uh, this is just one of the hoodies I have actually one of the long sleeves on underneath it. I have a whole bunch of them. So if you guys are interested in picking some of those up, uh, I know some of you guys have heard me talk about it uh, previously. Um, if you guys want to help support the channel and get yourself some DWS Outdoors merch, link in the description. But I think the first one we're going to have to talk about is the, you know, the elephant in the room, that guy. It doesn't look that big right there because it, you're not close to it. Um, I will get closer up to that one and uh, show you guys a little bit of the details and why I kept that one and everything like that. But uh, So that's going to be one. I have two more after that. I'm going to do a top three. Um, currently only have three that I would consider really big walleye. Um, one monster. And I have two videos for the other ones, but this guy is going to be more of a story real quick. Um, I'll keep it short because it's just me explaining it and I'm going to talk about them a little bit. Um, something that I want everyone to keep an uh, open mind to. Uh, well, and I can actually, I just remembered, I'm going to show you guys uh, what I caught all of them on. That way you guys can duplicate the same thing if you choose to do that. Um, two of them you're going to probably not want to duplicate because it wasn't one of those like planned things, but you'll get the point. Um, so let's talk about this guy real quick. Okay. So now that I'm standing next to it, <laughs> you guys can see he's not small. So that's my hand next to him. I'll try and get a better shot of that for you guys. <laughs> um, this is a 28 eight pound walleye. Uh, let's see, do this one right there. That gives her some uh, credit. She's got a big fat belly on her. Uh, she had great coloring. And actually, the coloring kind of pops when I film it from this angle. Uh, taxidermist didn't do too bad. I kind of want to get a replica of the, of this fish um, if I can get one ordered. Because I do have some better photos I think would look a little bit better. But long story short, I don't normally keep big fish. Um, especially if they're like this. I mean, this is a giant um, special, special genetics and kinds of fish like this. Um, but it happens to be a young fish. And then uh, on top of that... I'll tell you the reason I kept it. So when I went like this to pull her out of the ice hole, I actually ended up ripping its gills. Uh, it was one of those kind of panic moments, reach down, grab it real quick, and I felt them pop, and then she was bleeding, and I don't throw fish back. I'm one of those people that like, if it's gonna die, take it home and do something with it. Uh, the cool thing was the taxidermist was able to do that and give me the meat from it. So I was able to eat the meat from that fish. And now I have her permanently memorialized on the wall. And she looks pretty good. But let me show you the, <laughs> I'm going to show you the rod and reel setup that I, uh, that I caught her on. And you guys are going to get a kick out of this. All right. That would be my 30 inch Bull whip. <laughs> That's what I caught that girl on. This guy right here. Uh, Tuned Up Customs makes these. It's a custom rod, custom built to my specs. Uh, split grip and then the tape. I have reasons for all that stuff, but I just wanted to show you guys that you can catch big fish on small rods. And you'll see later on in this video how crazy this little rod is. Um, but I had this rod with that reel very specifically actually that's the very first uh revo 
I had bought specifically for this. Uh, I've had this this specific rod, uh, that rod, I've had for I think six or seven years now. Um, and then same thing, I got this with that rod. That's a Revo S10, so it's a 1000. Um, this reels backwards and folds down, so it fits in your rod case. Um, I'll, I'll have Tuned Up Customs linked below, and then I'll also link these reels below because this thing is a workhorse. That reel, that 1000 with four pound test line on it, yes, you, you heard that right, four pound test line, caught that fish just fine. The only reason, like I said, I kept it is I ripped its gills. If I wouldn't have done that, I would have put it back. All right, so like I was saying, this is the rod I caught it on. So. I'm going to break down the story really quick for you. I don't want to make this too long because there's no visuals and it's just that fish. You can, you can obviously, I have the fish. I caught it. <laughs> but, uh, so this is a 30 inch split grip bull whip and this is a panfish rod and it's, it's specifically named the bull whip because it's meant for those guys. That, that's a giant bluegill that I caught. Uh, it's a bull, bluegill, hence the name bullwhip. Um, but I caught that open water, obviously. But that's the reason I have this rod, is I like chasing giant panfish. And it is, like, you can see it's very simple, it looks like. But this section right here is a sight indicator rod. So from that point where it bends from here to here is all backbone. Hence why I was able to land that fish. Uh, I was actually crappie fishing out on a lake that some people might know. I don't know if I should say it because <laughs> there's going to be 10 million of you guys that want to go out there. It's a big clear lake in southern Wisconsin. That's what you guys get. If you can figure it out, go chase those down through the ice. I will tell you right now, the only reason I caught that was I was crappie fishing. It was the sun was going down. But the ice, the ice, at the, this is the key point here. The ice at that time was crystal clear. So when I went out there, like I could see through the ice. And if you know this lake, you can see down 15 feet through the ice if it's clear ice. Uh, it was only like five to six inches of ice. Um, and there were pressure ridges, ridges where the water had come up and it had caught some drifting snow. So there were like strips of uh, snow on those little cracks. So the water comes up through the ice, gets on top of the ice. The snow sticks to that, but doesn't stick to anything else. Crystal clear water everywhere else but those pressure ridges. Well, these guys, this is your tip, pay attention. These guys follow those. So do other fish. Um, and what I had found out the previous day out there was I stayed a little bit late, but I didn't, I, I was working and I couldn't stay out too late. But right when I had to leave, I started seeing crappie move in on one of those pressure ridges. So I went back the next day and I was catching a couple. I got two or three crappie that day, uh, nothing really big, but it was like pre-dark, so like just before sundown type thing, probably like last hour light. And uh, I was sight fishing, so I was actually like watching, because the water's so clear that it's almost pointless to use this at that point. Uh, but I had just got it and I wanted to use it, and I hadn't caught any crappie on it yet, because I just got it. So the crappie I did catch, I caught on a spoon before that, but I'll get into that in a different video. Um, so I'm sight fishing and watching fish swim in. And the, there were a couple crappie that swam through. And you can see them clear as day because there's no snow cover anywhere else besides right where my shack is. So I'm sitting on that highway. I'm looking down the hole and I, you know, every once in a while I would lean around and look back and forth. And you can see out 20 feet to each side because I'm in 15, 16 feet of water. So... When you're doing this, you can see all the way to the bottom, 20, you know, 20 feet out that way, 20, 30 feet out that way, whatever. And I was fishing with a, what are those things called? Not a hexi fly. They're, they're flat jigs. I can't, I don't know if I have one still. Either way, it's just a little flat jig with a single hook um, with two like round eyes or tungsten. And when you bounce them, they kind of dart off to the sides. And I had two wax worms. I'll never forget it. <laughs> She burned that one into my brain. Um, and I'm bouncing it, bouncing it. And every once in a while, a crappie would come up a little bit and just kind of skirt me. And I think it was because I was sight fishing uh, crystal clear water. They can see you. They would just swim away. Um, but so I'm bouncing, bouncing. Long story short, I lean over one of the times and 
I saw just this blimp of a fish cruising about mid-water column, which I didn't think it was a walleye. I thought that was a big northern pike at first um, because it was like five feet down or six feet down in 15 to 16 feet of water. So if you think about that, your brain doesn't automatically think walleye. They do suspend, they do this stuff, but most of the time they come in on the bottom and they work their way up towards your bait if they're going to come up at all. Um, so I saw them and I was just, I literally kind of told you, comment below if you talk to yourself a little bit when you're thinking about big fish and you see them. Um, I literally told myself, I'm like, well, let's see if we can get this guy to bite. <laughs> like, it's not going to happen, but the entertainment of like trying to get him to come up to a tiny little hexy fly with a, with two wax worms. And I bounced it and I watched him twitch and I went, oh, I got its attention. <laughs> and I was like, let's see if we can do that again. And I did a, uh, so instead of bouncing the hexy fly, you can sweep. And with this, when you sweep, it preloads and then it flicks. It does this nice little flick at the top. I love this rod for that reason. Um, so it swims up and then flicks and then dies. So it's very natural. It was dying. I was watching the hexy fly. I looked over and it just, Suddenly there was the walleye there with its mouth open and swam right, right across my hexy fly. It disappeared and I was like, no way. There's no way it did that. And I'm like, oh, set the hook. <laughs> and I flicked my wrist and that's, uh, that's the story of how I caught that thing. And I literally like, I, I battled it. That real, the drag is money. That's why I buy them. I'm not affiliated with them. That's why I have them linked below in the Amazon. If you want to help support the channel, if you buy anything from the Amazon links, it gives me like 2% of whatever. So that allows me to get back out. It's kind of like gas money, whatever you want to say. It's not that much, but it still helps out the channel. So if you guys want to pick up those reels, they're like a, I think it's a hundred dollar reel. Uh, if they're on sale, you can get them for less than a hundred dollars, but it's a really nice reel that you can use year round. Obviously it's on my open water rod right now. I put it, I change it back and forth, back and forth. Um, because it, it works. And then, like I said, that one's almost seven years old and I have three more, four more of those reels. Um, now I've been investing them. They're investments. But like I said, long story short, I got up to the hole and it was one of those things where like it was flashing in the hole and I just didn't want to lose it because it's the biggest wall I had ever seen. Um, I thought it was a 30 plus, whatever, stuck my hand down there. And when I went to grab it by the gill plate, usually you get a good firm hold of the gill plate and you can pull them out and they're fine. Uh, but my hand, when it slid in, it just popped the gills. Um, so fragile fish. And like I said, it started bleeding. I instantly was just like, I, I guess I'm mounting this fish. I don't want to throw it back and watch it die. Cause that would just be stupid and kind of sad. So long story turned long, sorry, <laughs> but the next two will be pretty simple. Um, the next fish I caught on, I caught on this rod right here. This is my tuned up customs, 32 inch precision. And this rod is new to me for last season, uh, but I used it for a lot of things. The idea was a light, <laughs> this is the irony here. This was gonna be a light perch or a good stout perch rod and a light walleye rod um they do have like a power precision but this is just the, my 32 inch it's it's got a pretty stiff uh let's see if i can get that to focus it's got a pretty stiff rod tip to it um it's got titanium recoil guides split cork grip um i like split, split grips because you can feel the rod through it uh it just seems like it's a little bit more sensitive to me it could be all in my head, but, but I'm going to describe this, uh, day <laughs> in quick detail real quick here. And then I'm just going to show you guys the video and that way we can kind of get on to the next one after that. Uh, I only have three giant walleye right now, um, that I've caught for ice fishing. I do have open water ones. Um, but we'll get to that a different time, probably next year or something like that. Um, but this next fish, like I said, I got on that uh, 32 inch precision. I had just used it. Um, I'd caught a bunch of little walleye on it. So I, I, it's, I wasn't unfamiliar with catching fish on it. I knew kind of how it reacted. It's got a good, um, a good steady backbone. So it's, it, I mean, it's for as light it is, it as light as it is, it's pretty stiff, um, but it's sensitive. So 
like you know you can when you're when i'm fishing i fish you know with the pencil style or even if you're just kind of doing little pops or something like that i always keep my finger on the blank or if i'm holding it pencil style you know you put the the blank in your palm like that that's why you do this <laughs> um that's why you run split clips grips but i use it for light spoons and stuff like that um i have a bunch of good perch videos with this and stuff like that but we'll keep this one short i fished all day long this is i got out on a big body of water it was a wisconsin flowage we'll say that i'll just keep the names out of it but you guys will figure it out after you watch the video well you might you might not but this is incentive get out and fish the deep spots on wisconsin's uh river flowages so flowages they put a dam up uh backs up the the river and becomes a lake um they do have flow through them so you have to be a lot more careful when you're ice fishing them i'm fairly understanding i'm not a know-it-all as far as it goes as far as like ice safety and stuff on them but it can change quickly um just be safe about it don't rush into fishing a flowage if you've never done it before take a buddy all that stuff but here's the caveat <laughs> it pays off because most of wisconsin's flowages the good ones anyways have a uh slot limit so this one has a slot limit from 15 to 19 inches and then one over i think one over 20 28 yeah one over 28 so from 20 inches to 27 and three quarters or whatever uh to 28 inches you can't keep those so there's a lot of big fish in that bracket uh from 19 to 20 uh 28 and the thing is is they're hungry they're big hungry fish um so back to the story real quick here and then i'll show you um i like i said i fished morning i tried fishing the morning bite uh here's a big tip for you guys they like sunlight in flowages, especially if the water's dirty. Uh, if the water's really dirty in the uh, body of water you're fishing, fish from like 10 till 2. Uh, that's your best time period, and you'll catch more fish that way. But I always have this feeling like there's going to be a bite window in the morning and bite window in the evening. It's kind of standard procedure with those guys, uh, or at night. But uh, this lake doesn't really do well at night. But uh, anyways, fish morning. I got a couple small, uh, I think I got... A couple small perch that they i'm not sure a uh, couple small perch couple crappie i think i think that's how that day was going um and then i got a couple small walleye later in the day so i've been there all day so like eight nine hours i've been fishing um and it's getting dark and the sun's going down and it was one of those things where i'm like ah it's a dirty water flowage there's nothing gonna bite you know into dark which i never really get a good bite window into dark um, so I started packing up actually, and I had this rod set up with one of those reels with six pound test line on it. Cause when I'm fit, when I'm specifically fishing for walleye, I run six pound test just in case I catch a giant hog or something like that. Uh, cause you're using specific big, big baits and stuff like that normally, but I was using a little JB lures, um, varmint spoon, I think it's called, uh, in gold with a minnow head because I had caught three or four smaller walleyes and I wasn't necessarily chasing giant walleyes. I was thinking I was get, trying to get an eater that day, um, which an eater obviously is from 15 to 19 inches, somewhere in the slot limit so you can keep them. Uh, and I, I, I like keeping 16, 17 inch walleye. Those are perfect eaters. But uh, so I had caught some smaller ones and I think I caught a keeper actually before this. So I'm packing up and I'm like, well, I got one fish to keep or whatever to eat. I'll pack up my stuff. I went and got my tip-ups and stuff like that. Um, I have my iFish Pro, so it takes a little bit. And it's getting dark. And I come back and I leave my uh, flasher on. I have an LX7 and a Helix 7. Uh, that day I was using my LX7 from Markham. And the, the way I have it set up, I have it like set up the bottom 10 feet zoom and then the full water column on the flasher, just in case something comes in up, you know, up higher, I can see them still. But the bottom 10 feet, obviously for the walleye that are coming in, uh, it allows you to see fish that are like hugging the mud. They can like run belly to the mud, but I can still see them. Um, so I sit down, I look around, take inventory, and I look down at my sonar <laughs> at the LX-7, and I see a little line pop up. And I'm like, oh, great, you know, and there's another one. So something happened all day long where they, they were fish swimming through, but none of them would stop. So they're just cruising. Um, I'm like, oh, good. There's another big fish coming through and I'm not going to catch them. Uh, 
let's just try and drop it down anyways. Maybe we'll get his detention. And I'm watching my bait fall and the fish disappears. And I'm like, see, he's gone. I'm like, whatever. I'll bounce it off the bottom once or twice. So pound the bottom once or twice. I pick it up. Nothing. I reel it up like four or five feet, I think. You'll, you'll have to just see the scenario. I'll play this whole scenario out. And uh, yeah, needless to say, I reel it up four or five feet and I'll just show you the rest right here. Okay, I was actually wrapping up things and then the monster came off the bottom here. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> it's putting my precision through a workout. Hopefully you guys can see this. I had to put my freaking GoPro on and open up the shack so you guys could see everything and I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if I land it. Looks like a giant walleye. Oh my god! <laughs> I barely had it hooked. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at that, a little tiny spoon and a minnow head. Oh. This thing's obviously going back, but I'm so glad I was able to get the GoPro on for a second. God, I gotta weigh this thing. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna weigh her real quick. I have her in the live well thing. I'm so happy I have the live well. Um, I'm gonna say seven to eight pounds at least. I have a scale, it works. It's on pounds, kilograms. Hopefully we can switch it back. Okay, she's on pounds now. Eight pounds, one ounce. <laughs> 27. Might be a little bit over, but I'm gonna get her back real quick here. I don't wanna beat her up. <laughs> really okay so you guys are gonna see this first but i, I did my outro <laughs> and i dropped down because i saw a big fat log mark on the bottom <laughs> it's so okay so <laughs> like i said <laughs> that was one of those days so i was there all day long sun was going down nothing was supposed to be happening the way it did uh but realistically that walleye did exactly what a walleye is supposed to do sundown bite low visibility gold spoon 
dirty water. Like this thing checked off all the list. Um, but it, like I said, that that rod wasn't meant for these giant walleye. And and I think if I forgot how heavy that one exactly is, I think it's about eight pounds something. Um, I'll I'll put it in the the video that you've seen. But uh, yeah, that was this big surprise. I was like, what just happened? I apparently staying all day long was the right thing to do. So that is tip number whatever for you guys. Just stick it out a little bit longer. Make that one last cast uh, for ice fishing. Obviously, drop it one more time, uh, especially if you see a fish down below. That's why I my two rules are um, leave one tip up in, pack everything up, and leave my sonar in the hole in the shack. Uh, just in case I come back and I look down, there's a fish. You can always undo a, a, a rod real quick or pull a rod real quick out and drop it down and possibly catch one of your biggest walleye. So that giant, uh, that was another giant... I, it was built bigger than that thing, uh, but it was about the same size as that one. I think that was like eight pounds even. Uh, the one that I just showed you guys was about eight pounds, like six ounces or something like that. All right, so that's two. Let's go to the finale. How about you guys? Uh, just this is going to be one of those goofy things. I'm going to just convey this to you. I was white fishing, so white fish on Green Bay. And if you haven't seen this one yet, you're going to want to, because this bow whip that I've had for this entire time that caught my first PB walleye now owns the title for the biggest walleye I've ever seen in person. So let's just watch that now. What do you, is that a fish? It is. That's a white bass. A white, white fish. You got him? I missed him. Oh my God, that's a big one, Fredo. Am I gonna get him? That would be so cool. Yeah, that's not a white. If it is, it's it's very big. I have it. Get back! Get! Oh God! Is he in that? Is it on there? No. Okay, we're good. You lift it out? Yeah, you're good. Keep it up. I can't believe I missed that fish. All right, whatever Dave catches here, I had it in its mouth. Yeah, well, I'm still hooked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a walleye. This feels like my eight pounder, dude. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. It's a giant green boat. Back off. Back off. <laughs> it doesn't go on anywhere anytime soon. This could be a 10 pound walleye. Looks like it. So glad we stayed this long. Turn your camera sideways so it's shot right if you're going to do that. Please. <laughs> I'm just doing Snapchat. Oh. Okay, <laughs> this ain't coming in anytime soon. Dave's got a giant walleye on that I had it in my in. I had my bait in its mouth, probably a ten pounder. <laughs> Sucks to suck. <laughs> Wait, so this thing just came in and ate two <laughs> waxworm jigs. That's so weird. Can I Facebook it or do you want me to do another video? Yeah, but just back up and turn it sideways so it's I'll land it should I do Facebook live no <laughs> Dave stole my walleye yeah sore loser is that it is that, is that the one? Oh my god he's barely hooked dude oh my god it's a giant Yep. It's a white fish eater. Oh, don't do that. It's got a giant wart on it. <laughs> <laughs> I this... think that's a 10-pound fish. Do you need help or no? It's stuck in the hole. Yep. You gotta drop it down.
she's got to turn up by herself. I'm not forcing it. <laughs> Jesus oh, freaking Christ. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Frito. You got to run and grab my bag. My heart is slamming right now. <sighs> Gotta breathe. <sighs> yeah, what is that? <laughs> what is that? Oh, I had it good. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, wait, she's got a... What do you want out of your bag? Don't get off the... <sighs> that blow up has caught more big fish than any of my other rods. <clears throat> That's my 30. No friggin' way, that's my 30. Oh. Oh. Alright. Zeroed. Twelve. Twelve nine. I told you it was a freaking ten. <laughs> I also got a giant walleye. 12 pounds, 9 ounces. I got my 30. And I'm going to get a replica of this thing. Okay. Look at this 8 inch hole. <laughs> Look how fat that thing is. Let's let her go. Biggest slow mo release I'm gonna have this year. Oh, come on, turn. Oh, big. Big. Bye bye, 12.9 pound, 30 ounce leg fish. <laughs> All right, so like I was saying, biggest walleye I've ever seen in person. That was almost a 13 pound walleye on that exact same reel, that same one. So my panfish rod apparently is a walleye slaying rod, and I will not not hate it for that um if i get another 30 plus walleye on that rod i, I i'm not gonna be mad I'm, I'm just not gonna be mad you can't be mad you just can't be uh comment below how many of you guys wish you went out pan fishing or white fishing or something and stuck a giant walleye just comment just 
how many would you love to do that? Uh, because I still, like, just thinking about it gives me goosebumps. That thing was a freak. And I'm so happy I was able to put her back because I can get a, I can get a replica of that. I might even get a replica with a giant wart on its side. It had a giant, uh, one of those giant, like, wart things that's, like, sticking out, like, that big. Uh, people call them cold water sores, whatever. But uh, she's going to make that thing look like a minnow. <laughs> so, long story short, bull whips apparently can handle giant giant fish and i've actually caught like 36 inch 37 inch uh northern pike on that bullwhip that same one um for whatever reason well i mean it makes sense i wherever there's giant panfish around wherever there's panfish around there's usually big fish chasing those panfish around uh so if you guys that's another good tip i guess look for the small fish and you find the big fish it's pretty simple but Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Like I said before at the beginning of the video, if you guys want to pick up some merch, I will try to set this up here so you guys can actually see what it says on the back here. I have a bunch of different... Here. I have a bunch of different video... or Yeah, I have a bunch of different videos and stuff like that. I'll actually put that uh video at the end of this one if you guys want to see all the different merch i have a bunch of different colors and stuff like that and i went over it really uh thoroughly in my other video if you guys haven't seen that one stay to the end of this video it'll be one of those videos for you otherwise like i said big fish come on small rods so don't always uh count yourself out chasing monsters some people think you need all the the big gear or whatever like that and i, I get trapped in that too i want big rods big stuff like that for uh big fish but you just never know what's going to bite. So, like I said before, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Stay tuned for some future ice fishing content. And obviously, if you're not new here, you know what's up. But if you are new, can you please just remember to...